say, all right, YouTube, welcome, welcome. I am Claudia Mühlenweg. This is Clear Vision Wednesday. And today I have a super special guest from Germany, my home country. And her name is Judith Bolz. And by the way, I'm Claudia Mühlenweg. If you don't know, I'm the creator of the Naturally Clear Vision Method. And today's topic is a super interesting one for me because we know we often talk about mindset and changing our beliefs, but we are trying to do that from a conscious level where you just, from your mind level, where you create those beliefs, it's incredibly hard, right, to kind of change your your beliefs and your mindset about things. And Judith has a great way to help us to address the unconscious mind and actually change it on that unconscious level. And just a quick note, she's gonna introduce herself in a second, but just what I wanna say, she's one of the foremost um, vision educators in Germany, doing this work that I'm doing here in Germany. And she's been doing this, I think for over three decades for a really long time. And she's certified in hypnosis, which is what we're going to be discovering today. And what else? I don't think I want to say that much more, you did. I just let me bring you up here on the stage and, you know, maybe just introduce yourself a little bit and also why you do this work. Okay. <laughs> yes. I'm always very excited when I speak in English. So please. <laughs> um in German, it's lots easier. Okay, I start. Um, when I was um, 25, I discovered the vision training. I was very young. I studied um, at the university in Marburg. And somebody um, told me, hey, you did, there is something you can do for your eyes. Um, you can, um, there are methods. And I thought, oh, wow, I want to do that. And then I start, uh, during my study, it was um, 1999, I, no, 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 1999. 1990, yes. And um, I find it very close to my city and I start with Wolfgang Hetcher Rosenbauer and uh, Micha Krenz and they, um, um, they have done the Bates work and but also the body work from Kelly. And so I loved this and afterwards my eyes getting better. I was... Um, um, my eyes, my eye problem was a little bit difficult because I had a very strong eye and a weak eye and I couldn't combine them really good. And therefore I, um, I went through school without glasses, but my vision was not very good. And then when I studied, I had classes, but it was always difficult for me. And I searched for another method. And um, Yes, my eyes, they developed well, but it was not um, so easy to bring it to other people. Sometimes I thought, oh, my God, I'm so exhausted about that. Why um, is it not the same for other people? And then I searched for um, more methods and I find the NLP further education and um, I learned in NLP a lot about Milton Erickson and Milton Erickson is um, a hypnotherapist and I talk more later about Milton Erickson and when I um, discovered his method I was so um, I was yeah a little bit exhausted about that because it was so easy it was so light and um i like to do things um which are not so heavy and so it was for me a really um comfortable method and um yes i want to show you more about it with some slides but maybe i don't know claudia do you have a question before <laughs> No, that, this is all great. We can definitely, I think you mean excited, not exhausted. Ah, oh, exhausted. I said oh, exhausted. No, excited. Totally yes. <laughs> it's totally fine. I, I did that too. So it's, I know you usually don't speak in English and it's late in the evening. And so 
Um, but yeah, you were excited about this. And I, I love about your work that it's light, right? That it's not like this heavy, mm -hmm. serious, make it fun and playful and light. And I attended one of your workshops in Frankfurt two years ago at the international conference. And that was just so wonderful. So no, you can go ahead if you, so we, what we're going to do is like a little bit of education, right? About like why you're doing what you're doing, why this is working and why this is helpful for a lot of people. And if not everybody, to do this kind of practice to improve your eyesight. And then we will do an interactive experience, right? That's kind of what the agenda is today. So go ahead with your slides. Right. You're <laughs> welcome to start doing that first and then. So I start with some slides, so it's also easier for me. So you can see my slide. So our, our title is Hypnosis for Better Eyesight. Claudia, you can see it? Yes, we can. Yes. Okay, you can. And um, yes, first, Thank you that you invite me. It's very, for me, very nice to talk here. And um, I said something about me. I'm a qualified pedagogic, a vision trainer, and a pain master and hypnotherapist, according to Milton Erickson. And I want to tell you a little bit about Milton Erickson. He was born in Wisconsin in 91 and uh, died 1980. In 1990, he, um, he became ill with polio and very strong. And um, yes, the doctor said this boy, he can't um, yeah, survive because it's so hard. But Milton Erickson, he wanted to uh, survive. And he said, please bring my bed to the window and I want to see the next sunrise. And that happened but he was um, paralyzed from the whole body and he had only his eye movement left. Very interesting. <laughs> Everything was paralyzed, only the eye movement. And um, then he, <clears throat> uh, his parents, they were farmers. They had no time for him, but he, has, uh, he had lots of um, little brothers and sisters and he, had nothing to do because he can't move. So he looked the whole day after his brothers and sisters and he looked how they moved and he bring back everything to himself. So he, um, I think it took two years and he can walk again. And he, uh, oh, sorry, he walked again. He can uh, um, talk to people because the language was also not good. And it was a really great story of self-healing. And then he gets, um, he studied medicine and psychology at the University of Wisconsin and he um, helped people with um, hypnosis. So he was the founder of hypnotherapy. And I think from his background, so it's, um, uh, yes, um, it's very, um, yeah, exciting what he developed. So the concept is, I think you can see here my picture. The concept is that we have the conscious and the unconscious. And most of us, we try to solve our problems with the conscious mind. So maybe we have headache, we have eye disease, and we try to solve it with the conscious mind. Uh, we make exercises very good, but it's not all. It, oh, sorry. It's not all. So we have also the unconsciousness, the unconscious. So, and the unconscious is nine, 90%. This is here. I show you at the iceberg model or iceberg theory. I think it's the same. It's also uh, well known in America. So we have 10 to 20 percent is the conscious mind and 80 to 90 percent is the unconscious mind and hypnosis uses 90 percent of the unconscious abilities and this was the Milton Erickson work he said please stop thinking <laughs> please go into your unconscious and search for solutions and for me, it was a really, really um, new step into new possibilities. I think if I think if I have not learned this, I never would do an English workshop. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> so it's uh, uh, really cool. So 10% and 90%. And uh, the interesting thing is that we always use this 10% and we have 90% more to use. Yes, and we have a lot of blocking beliefs when seeing. I think Claudia, maybe you do something. You do something similar sometimes, no? If you search also for the blocking beliefs, so we have beliefs like the older you get, the worse your eyes get, or the more you read or sit at the screen, the worse your eyes become. Or if you are nearsighted, you will not achieve anything with vision training. These are sentences I hear every day from my clients. They ask me that. Really? Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> um, or vision training cannot improve the eyes. The eyeball is the cause. There's an eyeball you can't change. There's I nothing. Hear <laughs> I hear that a too, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Or there's nothing you can do for better vision. This, these are typical questions when people um, come new into the therapy and the vision therapy or vision um, teaching. And these are social or society beliefs. Um, and it's sometimes difficult to go against them because if you want to change your eyes, you, there are always the other people, they say, ah, no, it's not possible. <laughs> so these are the blocking beliefs um, of, the, of the society. Yeah, we have um, some beliefs holding us back from seeing better. It's like, oh, it's so hard or it's so exhausting. I use this <laughs> word wrong. Or I have to practice too much or I have no time. No, 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 no time. I have no time for an exercise. Or this is too much work for me or that might work for others, but not for me. No, 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 not in my case. So my question to you is, what do you think? What do you believe? What are your beliefs? Sometimes it's good to close your eyes and think about what are my beliefs about vision? What is um, holding me back from seeing better? Because these beliefs are very strong. I think it's a really good key to find blocks and to solve blocks. But the first step is, what are my beliefs about seeing? Yes, and when you open your eyes, then we have the encouraging beliefs to see. Um, these are much, um, yeah, you, you get motivated from that. So um, it can be the healthier you eat, the better you can see, or the more you move in the fresh air, the better your eyes will be. Or if you are nearsighted, you can improve your eyes with nice exercises. Or the more you move your eyes, the more you can see. The more you move your eyes, the more you can see. Or the eyes are 90-90% water and the eyeball is very flexible. So the eyeball can change because it's 99% of water. It's a lot. It's a lot. And it's very flexible. The more eye rituals you integrate into your daily life, the faster you will have success. So if you listen to this sentence or you listen to this sentence, maybe this one, you get complete different feelings. Maybe close your eyes again and I get you the blocking beliefs and you feel what you feel when you hear, when you hear this beliefs. The older you get, the worse your eyes get. The more you read or sit at the screen, the worse your eyes become. If you are nearsighted, you will not achieve anything with vision training. Vision training cannot improve the eyes. The eyeball is the cause. 
There is nothing you can do for better vision. There's nothing you can do. Or if when you have a disease and the doctor says, no, there's nothing you can do. So your unconscious, there is nothing. It cannot respond on these beliefs. It's like a big block. But if you hear and now feel again, the healthier you eat, the better you can see. Or the more you move in fresh air, the better your eyes will be. Or if you are nearsighted or farsighted, or if you have a disease, eye disease, you can improve your eyes with nice exercises. You can play exercises. You can have fun. You can improve your eyes. The more you move your eyes, the more you see. Um, somebody told me a short time before this uh, evening today that there are now, uh, ah, it was in NIM. So somebody showed a doctor or neurologist, a neuro, uh, neuro doctor. <laughs> that, <Neurologist. laughs> neuro, yeah, that, uh, that the retina. Um, is better, um, there's more blood in the retina when you move your eyes. So please move your eyes and you see better. The eyes are 99% water and the eyeball is very flexible, very flexible. The more eye rituals you integrate into your daily life, the faster you, you will have success. And I think you have different feelings if you're here the blocking beliefs or the motivation beliefs. So it's very, very uh, important what, how you speak with yourself. But there's one thing which is really important. Sometimes you don't want to change and you don't want to change in the unconscious because you don't want to change um, there's a good intention of blurred vision on, and it's very important because it may keep us from seeing better. A good intention can be, oh, I don't want to see, I want to be alone. Oh, let me alone. Oh, everything is too much. Uh, oh, I don't um, have to react on everything. No, no, no. So it's like, um, I can hide myself or I can protect myself from, um, from the world outside. So this is a, some, sometimes a good intention and we have to look for that. But now back to Milton Erickson and the key of the unconscious. Conscious. The unconscious mind listens to the inner images, to our inner, inner images, to the inner voice and to the feelings we have and to the concepts our mind deals with. So if we have a special concept, our unconscious will act like this. So it's really important to pay attention to what you say to yourself. So if you say, oh, I'm in Germany, people say, oh, I'm a blind chicken. I don't know. Do you say the same in America? They usually say I'm blind like a bat, like a fledermouse. Ah, That's what okay. say. Yeah. Yeah. Blind like a bat. <laughs> yeah. And there are people, they say this is the whole day to itself. So it makes something with us. So we, um, we should pay attention or pay attention to which way you talk to yourself. Are you friendly with yourself or are you boof? <laughs> boof. <laughs> Your unconscious listens and act on what you say. So speak to yourself in a friendly and positive way. And this is very usual for uh, hypnosis. So we speak or I speak to people like to an eight-year-old boy or girl. So it's very warm and very friendly in the hypnosis. So be in a friendly expectation when you do vision training. This is also a really important point to be in, in, in a good 
expectation that we um, know, okay, something great will happen, something good will happen to us when we do that. So, and this is my, um, yes, I love these both parts, the conscious and the unconscious. They should be friends. So it's very important that there is a co cooperation. And this is, I think, the, um, yes, this is a point we have to look at. Because sometimes the conscious, the conscious and the unconscious are in this way. So they are don't, they don't, um, they are not friends, they fight sometimes against each other. And then life is really a trouble or it's really hard because um, they not cooperate with each other. And so I really could you did, um, about that because I would think when you begin the vision training and you consciously change your mind and you say different positive, one of the positive statements instead of, you know, I can't see anything or it's difficult, but you're unconscious, you know, you're consciously saying that, but your unconscious might still be like on the old playlist, you know, it might still be the doing the old thing, right? Is that kind of, do you find that in the beginning when you first start your conscious mind learns the new things and the new techniques and then new, new mindset, do you find that's an area where there's the, there is not a good friendship between the unconscious and the conscious? Is that something that you've noticed? I'm just curious. Mm. I'm not sure if I understand exactly what you mean. Um, I think you mean if you say a lot of positive things, but it's not in the in the unconscious. Yeah, exactly. So you know, when before we begin any of this, right? We we don't even realize that our conscious mind also always talks negatively, right? And then we learn to change that and be more positive with our conscious mm -hmm. mind, our unconscious in that beginning period might still, will still be holding on to the old stories. So I feel mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. right? In that period, when you start to make changes, that could be a time where, where there's a big gap between the unconscious and the conscious mind. Mm -hmm. This is more, what do you mean? Is um, This is more the good intention. Um, yeah. The, the cooperation, it's very easy. If you say, okay, I, I've, I have the way, I find the way that the conscious and the unconscious can talk together. So I want to do a tr trance with you today. So this is so the, the idea when both talk together. Um, this is really um, easy, but sometimes you have good intentions not to change anything. And the good intention is so important. And then we have to work in another way. Then we have to ask, um, what is your good intention? And then we search in the unconscious three new possibilities to live this good intention in another way, in a constructive way. So we are a little bit further. <laughs> uh, I want to tell it after afterwards because it's um, it's a really important point. But first we go in this easy way. Um, sometimes it's more easy than we think. If we, um, Milton Erickson said um, that the conscious mind can give um, a wish into the unconscious and the unconscious is a little bit like a chief. So the conscious mind is a chief and the unconscious is the worker. It works really good for you, but it needs it needs um, a direction, a question, a wish, or something. So I get I go a little bit further with my slides, then it gets clear, more clear. Um, Milton Erickson says your unconscious is with you all the time. It's like a good friend. And it has a treasure of experience, of um, memories, good memories. He says there are only the good memories. It's not like Freud, he said something else. Milton Erickson says this is a treasure of good memories, of experience, which must be given direction by the consciousness. So it um, has to be... Sometimes we have no, um, sag mir gerade mal Auftrag, einen Auftrag geben. 
we don't have an assignment. Assignment? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the unconscious consciousness that needs this, needs a direction. And sometimes we have no direction. Oh, yes. And the next step is the question to you. What do you want to be seeded into the unconscious? What do you like to plant or to seed? So maybe close your eyes and ask yourself, what are your wishes? wishes for your vision what is now today you wish what would be a step further a step further in your vision education or in clear vision or what is the most beautiful most important or best thing you can reach maybe today when you listen Imagine that in pictures, for example, the first thing is, mm, for example, I want to see clearly, easily and light with both eyes and wear my glasses only when I'm driving. I want to feel free. This is something I like. I want to be free when I see into the world. And um, then you can find pictures for it. So you can find um, pictures like happy eyes or bright and shining eyes. Um, what comes in your mind? Maybe eyes like a happy child. Yeah, what is in your mind? And then you get maybe some pictures. Sometimes it's nice to look a little bit further into tomorrow or next year. Wow. Or what is your next step? How do you want to feel when you see clear? Okay. Come back. And... Um, my idea was to show you a little bit um, how you can um, train your... Oh, don't look at the slide. It's not so good. I don't want it. <laughs> so um, I want to show you um, how you can um, train to have more pictures in, inside you. So you can close your eyes and I give you some... Um, ideas, some pictures, and it's very, um, it's not, it's very fast because it's not thinking about these pictures. It's like um, they come in your mind. So please close your eyes and imagine these comfor comfortable pictures. Oh, I start with a red ball, a red ball, a yellow lemon. And then you can see a lemon tree. Or oh, you can see a flower meadow, a nice big tree, a waterfall snow-covered mountains, a colorful butterfly, or colorful autumn leaves in the wind, a burning candle, the rising full moon over the sea, the night sky, the wide blue sky or a night sky with lots of stars. You can see 
um, white, white river, a long river, a long river, and you stay upside, and so on. So very nice pictures, and they bring you also a good feeling or comfortable state. And you can train this sometimes. Yes, what are doing pictures with your mind? They activate the right hemisphere of the brain. And we are often in the left, so we think a lot. Uh, one thing after another, I have to do, I have to do, I have to do. And the right hemisphere is more slow down and give us pictures. And it stimulates the unconscious process. It creates the basis for good vision in the brain. So sometimes it's good to imagine pictures. Okay, now we get, we get more relaxed. Okay, ah, yes, it's now, yes, okay. I think it's time for maybe questions and, and um, then I want to show you how, how it can feel to be a little bit maybe in hypnosis so that you can um, have an exercise. Can we do that first and then we do the questions? You mean, yes, for, first? Yeah, yeah okay. let's do a little experience first. And I already like just the you calling out the different objects. I was like, that was so easy and relaxing. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, let's do a little experience and then we yes. have Q&A. Um, okay. We have a few people on YouTube too. And um, yeah. Yeah. Let's do that first. And then we have maybe we have questions then afterwards too about I thought experience. maybe um, if there is a there is no question at that moment. Right now, no, I don't see any questions okay. right now, just okay. comments so far. But yeah. Good. Yes, then I um I will start with a little trance. Okay. Should um, people be seated? Should they be seated? Or because I'm standing yeah. right now, what it's should everybody to sit on the chair like we are now? Because hypnosis, we don't do, um, we don't lie down. We most of the time we sit because it's good to to be a little bit awake in the head. <laughs> okay, so. What about standing? I'm standing right now at my standing ah, you're desk. standing. Yeah, look if it's possible. Maybe not so good. Can okay, so. If down, I down. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> and I will stand, and that's okay. So, um, okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, I invite you to close your eyes. No, before we close your eyes, we do something else. So, before you close your eyes, look around you and see three things you can see, and you say, to, for example. There is um, a handy, there is a glass of water, and there is um, a string. Ah, oh, yes, I want to do this, the string something. Handy is a German string word for cell phone. See. Sorry? <laughs> handy is a German word for cell phone. Nobody calls it. Oh, handy. sorry, it's cell phone. <laughs> but ah. it's okay. It's, it's okay. <laughs> cell phone. Oh, but I showed okay. it. <laughs> so, okay. Three things you can see. And then close your eyes. Three things you can hear. And three things you, you feel at that moment. Three feelings. Then open your eyes again. Two things you can see and give them a name, then close your eyes. Two things you can hear. It's equal of if it's just the same or other things. And two feelings. Then open your eyes, 
one thing you can see, close your eyes, one thing you can hear, and one feeling. And then you let your eyes closed. Find a good position. It's very good to have two feet on the floor and two hands on the legs. And you can feel the bottom under your feet. You can feel the chair. You can feel the eyelids from the closed eyes. And you can hear my voice. And you can take some deep breaths. Breathe in and breathe out very easily. There's nothing to do. You don't have to reach anything. You don't have to do anything. Nothing. Very comfortable. My voice is guiding you. And you're sitting very comfortable in your room. And you can relax your muscles, the strong muscles, but also the fine muscles. So start relax your muscles. I don't know, maybe you start with the feet and then with the legs. And the hips, the belly muscles, everything can relax, everything relax. The lower back, shoulders, your arms and hands, and your neck, and your face. There are lots of small little muscles in the face. So release it, very good, very good to relax now. There's nothing to do. You don't have to reach anything. Only to follow my voice, and to have a good time with yourself. Very good. Exactly. This is the good way. And when I count now from one to ten, when you hear the ten, you are ten more relaxed than before. So I start. One, you get deeper and deeper into relaxation. Two, deeper and deeper, very comfortable, very light, very easy. Three, four, it's so comfortable. It's so good to relax now to five. More and more relaxed to six. Very warm around you, seven. Very light, eight. And more and more relaxed to nine. And ten. Very good, very relaxed. And when you, in this good state, you can ask yourself 
What is the belief at the moment holding me back from better vision? And you have nothing to do. Give this question to your unconscious mind. What is the belief at that time holding me back from better vision? And if you have a good vision and it's not your question, then take something else. What is the belief holding me back from success, from eyes or for another important theme? And ask this your unconscious. And then you have nothing to do. There's nothing to do. Only waiting. Maybe there are pictures. Maybe there are words or thoughts. Maybe there are feelings. Everything is okay. And then, this was the question from Claudia, ask yourself, what is the good intention holding me back from better vision or more success or whatever your theme is? But please take only one, one theme. What is the good intention? holding me back. And then there's nothing to do. You can wait a little bit. You can trust that your unconscious will search for it, for the good intention. Maybe you like to breathe a little bit deeper. And then I ask your unconscious to find three new possibilities to lift this intention because it's important for you. You don't want to lose this intention. So find three new possibilities to live this intention in a constructive and very good way for you, in a constructive, good way. And then let go and ask your unconscious mind, Three new good constructive possibilities to live your intention in this way that you don't block your eyes. So that you free your eyes, but you can hold your intention. You can hold your intention, but you live it in a new way, in a constructive way. And it's not important to understand what I say. It's not important. Your unconscious will do this for you. You don't have to do anything. And it's not too important to find anything today. So maybe you have pictures. Maybe you have feelings. Maybe you have thoughts. Maybe there's nothing. It's okay, it's very good to have nothing. There's nothing, your unconscious is searching for it. Your unconscious is working for you. Three new possibilities for the intention, which brings you a step further. This is good for your process in a good way, in a good direction. So trust in this good direction and your 
unconscious will work for you. The next days, maybe the next weeks, maybe today overnight, maybe you have a really interesting dream. And so you can hold your good intention and on the other side, you can go further in the good direction, in better seeing, in more clear vision. Exactly. And then maybe there is a wish left. So you can give uh, a wish into your unconscious mind, like a seat today. So what do you want to reach for the next, hmm, the next three months, maybe the next half year or next year? What is important for you? And now you have the chance to ask your unconscious to help you. And it's really good if you give it as pictures or metaphorics. I like to have more shiny eyes or more happiness, like, yeah, stars in a um, at night or sunny, healthy eyes, whatever, what you find, give a wish to your unconscious mind. There's nothing to do. It's like to plant or to seed something. And then it can grow for you without working because your unconscious is working for you. You don't have to do anything. Really comfortable. And now feel like you feel in this moment And take everything with you when you come back slowly, slowly. When I count from 10 to 1, you get more and more awake from 10 to 9 to 8, up and up and more awake and fresh to 7 and more up to six and you feel really good when you come to five and more and more up to four and more awake to three and fresh and uh, with clear vision to two and up and up to one and then stretch and open your eyes and more clear vision to one zero <laughs> and come back very fresh and awake. <clears throat> wow, that was very powerful. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I, I'm wondering. Uh, thank you so much, Judith. That was really nice. Um, I've done this before, but I didn't feel like I could really let go. You had, you just have a very calming voice, and uh, <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful. So, um, in our My Clear Vision Club community, we will be able to share some of the experiences, right? Right. Like once we start the YouTube live, we will share some of. We will talk. If you're interested in the Clear Vision Club, let me know. Just send me a message. Um, um, but are there any questions on YouTube? I see we have people watching live. Are there any questions? There's some great comments in there. Um, 
Uh, it's funny, Peter was, <laughs> Peter was commenting that we agree on both wearing blue jumpers. No, we did not. This is literally funny I, that we have the same top on. No, but there's, uh, there's just some comments more like as you were talking. So it's not like any kind of specific question, but okay. how can we get people like, so if there's no questions and then let me look if in my, uh, in the Zoom, if there's any questions that we can share. No, everybody was just saying, um, Wonderful, excellent, uh, great. Everybody had a really good time. That's so very, that's yes, it's very usual. After a hypnosis, you don't want to talk. Uh, you get very <laughs> <laughs> inside, in a good way inside, and you have no questions. So this is very good. <laughs> I think the maps ourselves, we will be able. But um, how can you get people like in touch with you? I know you have a podcast and you have books. I think the books are only in German, but what can you uh, Everything can you is in German. I have two things in English. This is, um, um, it's on YouTube, um, something about my book. It's in English and it's the podcast. Uh, it calls The Journey into the Eyes. And this is not um, in this way hypnosis as I do, uh, if I've done it today, but um, it's a very comfortable introduction into the journey of the eye. So you can try this yeah. and, the link um, i listened to that one that's a beautiful um it's a longer little visual visualization again like a journey through the eyes i love that one so i will put the links into the youtube i didn't have the links ready for the live but i will put them into the youtube description so if you're watching this later you will find them in there so both the link to her website and to that um journey through the eyes and what was the second thing that was in english you said that was the journey um, through the eyes um, it's right. a head up and see clearly um, the, um, it's a copy from Nathan from the conference so you can look inside if you okay, like great. to um, yes if you like to want more information about children and vision no? Mm -hmm. great so yeah. yeah if you don't speak German then but you did it's still a great your English is fabulous and there's still a it's, great resource it's and I know easy it's for me to to make a hypnosis than to make a presentation so um if somebody want to have hypnosis it's more easy for me <laughs> yeah and <laughs> so you work why. you work with children also a lot right and uh, so if anybody has German you know I know but yeah reach out to you then anything else you want to share some last words uh, with YouTube Live that you uh, want to share with the audience in terms of, you know, vision improvement or what, what what's important to you, anything? Yeah, else? always remember if you are blocked, it's very good to know. Um, it's very good to have uh, a wide vision because if you go in a wide vision, if you see not focused, focused is more the conscious mind. And um, uh, the white vision is the unconscious. So you can go with the white vision into the unconscious modus. This is maybe not a really good tip because um, I think that we often go to uh, with too much blocks through our life. <laughs> if you like, if you want to have more flow. So we should use our unconscious mind more. This is so that's a really good tip, right? Your peripheral vision. And we often talk about this. Jacob Lieberman calls it open focus, open which is focus. different from like, it doesn't mean that you're now trying to see the whole thing clear, right? That we want to make that clear that the central fixation, but kind of that awareness of the space and being not so honed into every mm -hmm. little detail. Yeah. So it doesn't mean that you're daydreaming. It's an so that's interesting. So that can get you more into the unconscious, yeah. Um, kind of realm as being in more in that kind of wider environment, which is easy yeah. to do in nature. I think it's really hard to do in inside. Yeah. For me personally, I feel mm -hmm. like it's easier to do when you're outside yeah, to have that's that. True. Yes, and it's uh, also important to change between uh, focus and open focus because yes. if you only work with open focus through the world it's very hard if you only work with focus through the world it's very hard so you have to change between it's like conscious and unconscious a good cooperation between a conscious and unconscious between open focus and focus and it's also between left and right brain it's also the cooperation between left and right eye so 
these are also two personalities who want to get friends. And if we have very um, different eyes, so one eye is going in this direction and the other in this, or there's a weak eye and a strong eye. So mostly we have two different personalities in, in inside and we can combine them also with hypnosis that we say, okay, these two parts, they can meet, they can shake hands, they can come together. So this is my work. I, I like it very much to work in this way because I had these two eyes and I know one eye had the personality to be very uh, cheeky and uh, a little bit noisy and very, um, um, it goes into the world and the other eye is shy and uh, uh, mm, um, yes, mm, shy is a good name for it. So they are very, um, they are two different personalities. And sometimes it's difficult to, to find a good way for both eyes. So it's good if they are friends. And this is something I like to do in the vision training. Awesome. So can people work with you privately to do some of this work uh, as like, or is it like, do you have group programs or? I yeah, guess? I showed at the last slide. Um, if, if somebody want at that time, uh, I don't have this online program, but um, I uh, accompany people three to five hours with, um, with, they can book a package and they can do that online um, and this work is very good if you make it uh, for individual, not too much people. Make it uh, individual. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you super so much, so much. I really appreciate you sharing this. I thought I had a wonderful experience. And so ah. subscribe, to, subscribe to Judith's channel, uh, Viva Crea Crea. Yeah, I think it's so <laughs> find her. <laughs> And if you speak German, I think most of your content is probably going to be in German. But anyway, thank you so much. This was wonderful. Um, subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out. And if you click the little bell, you will be notified. So I don't always send information out every single week about these calls. So, um, you know, I don't want to bombard you with too much email. But if you subscribe, you will get the information. You will get see that I'm live. And it's every Wednesday, the same time. You can't make a mistake, put it in your calendar and then you will be here. And obviously you can always watch the replay. It's going to be the same link will become the replay. So anyway, this was wonderful. And we will now do our little um, internal chat here in the Clear Vision Club. And I will stop the 